This is a um, rather deserted stretch of railroad. Well, it's alongside the railroad tracks. There's a couple businesses. Oh, here's a business where I used to work. Over here. Don't know if you'll see it. That's one of the trucking logistics slash logistics concerns that I worked for. That was one of the worst jobs I ever had. I literally had to escape out of that. There's a um, barbed wire yard around the truck yard and I ended up getting um, locked in that one time and I had to, in the middle of winter with bronchitis, I had to uh, throw my coat over like they do in what, Stal Stalag, what is that, Stalag 17 or something like that where they, uh, I had to throw my coat up over the barbed wire and, and hoist my body up over it and get out and walk through uh, blizzardy weather to uh, the waste store about a mile back there um, and then uh, call a cab to get home because my car was locked inside too. That's how that job ended. And I worked with a woman, I had to share a desk with a woman who uh, was uh, hoping to get married to a, a pedophile who was in state prison upstate and she would drive up every weekend to see him and she was uh, the loudest woman I've ever met in my life and they moved her all around the building because she was deafening people and um, also one of the most hostile and aggressive people I ever worked with in my life, probably because uh, everybody had hated her her entire life. I feel sorry for that, but there's nothing I could do and because um, she was uh, in love with a pedophile who was in state prison who was using her and she I suspect even she and her dim-wittedness knew that I say that because she's a really nasty person she would talk about the um you know the gay people that were putting um trying to molest children at Halloween and stuff like that and she had all these spiels that she would go on I think she knew obviously knew I was gay so she would tell me these things to try to get me upset at work and I usually wouldn't fall for it once or twice I might have fallen for it she did a lot of passive aggressive things with the, the, the territory of the desk which I, I sorry that she had to share a desk after being with the company for 30 years but then that's just so typical of the work environment every little bit of humiliation they can dish out even for her and it even got too much for her eventually she left I heard uh, for me it was going over being locked in and um, into the yard and having to go over in the middle of a, in a blizzard to throw my coat over barbed wire and to get out which I charged them for my coat as well they did pay that I will give them credit for that but not much else that was one of my lovely jobs. I have a lot of job horror stories, but that was one of, that's probably near the bottom. It's not the bottom now. There's about two or three others that would outdo that. No, I was not a crack whore or an assistant, nor an assistant crack whore. So, so we always know people always say crack whore is such a bad job, but then try the assistant crack whore, right? Here is, what are we, there you can see the WITF building again up on the hill. You probably can, I can. Again, it shrinks everything, doesn't it? There's the Sheraton up on the hill. Not the Sheridan, as in Richard Brinsley. The Sheraton. And there's the Christmas tree shops. I actually like that place. It's the most useless store in the world. It's even, at least an, even a dollar store has its useful items all through it. Whereas Christmas tree stores, mostly everything useful. That's where you get things that to me seem useful. Like uh, little all bird automatons that sing in little plastic cages with real bird feathers glued on them in China. It only imagines the horror, the horror that, of these denuded birds. But, um... I like that store. A lot of uh, good books in there, um, coffee table type books marked down. And it's just a weird environment, like I said, nothing useful. And the food items are all these gourmet food items that have expired five years ago and come from some Scandinavian country. It's fun stuff. Well, I'm almost home. I don't think I'll get assaulted in the back yard as I walk around. I have to go around the block. I can't go through the yard. It's snow is still too deep. Crossing over Eisenhower Boulevard, the boulevard of broken dreams and uh, crack vials. Just kidding. All the business people stay here too. They do have some good hotels and motels here, but they have a lot of dives. And there's the front frontier Frontier, uh, some kind of industries or something. That's where they were so nice when I car broke down one time. I went inside and they gave me my own office. It was so strange. It was like I worked there. People would come in and talk to me. I was waiting for the AAA people to come and I sat at this desk and I had to make a couple different calls and they were just like, they were cool with it. They were like, do you want coffee and stuff? And then they would stop in and they'd say, do you know where this is, this file is or something? I'd say, no, I don't work here. And they would just act like they were surprised. And it's a building that has about four rooms and four people in there. And I just couldn't understand why the people didn't know that I wasn't a regular employee when they came in and saw me sitting at a desk in an office all by myself. Very strange. It made me want to work there because the people were so absent-minded. Maybe I would fit in.